I'm Bruce Shaney, and today in Homemade Science, I want to take a look at something called Savart's Wheel. Now, this is an old demonstration that dates back to the 1600s, and it's a great example of showing how frequency affects pitch. So let's take a closer look at this and some other examples that demonstrate the same principle. I'll start by taking this apart. Let me shut it off. Now it's powered by 6 volts and I can control the speed or shut it off with this switch here. It has two motors supporting the axle and the wheels. The motors both turn in the same direction and I have two sets of wheels for it. Now let's start with this first one. This axle has 6 wheels on it and here's the number of teeth on each wheel. The idea is that the teeth on each wheel will cause this piece of paper to vibrate at different rates, producing different sounds. Increasing the speed increases the frequency. And that's increasing the pitch. I was interested to see how a wheel with a single tooth on it would compare to wheels with several teeth. It seems like no matter how fast I run it, it just doesn't sound like a note. Now in a previous video I showed a device that was similar to this, and that would be the siren disc. In this case, instead of a card hitting some bumps on a wheel, we have air being blown through a series of holes. Now I do have these set up with the same arrangement. On the siren disc, the series of holes goes 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. On Savart's wheel, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. As you can see, the behavior is very similar, and both of these pieces have a lot of history in the study of sound. Savart's wheel was originally developed by Robert Hooke, an English scientist, and first demonstrated around 1681. He developed it to produce sound waves at certain frequencies. About a century and a half later, the idea was later refined by Felix Savart as a way of investigating human perception of sound. Savart's wheels are still used today in science classes and museums and are available commercially. This next axle has eight wheels set up as an octave. When spun at the right speed, the numbers of teeth for each wheel correspond to the following notes. Now by adding more wheels to this, it could be made into a musical instrument. Some of the better copies may have up to 30 wheels on them and there are some musicians that do play them. For my device, I'll try and match the wheels up to the following musical symbols. Well, I think it's easy to see why this never became a popular instrument. It just doesn't have a very nice sound to it. Now, Savart's wheel is intended to make specific notes according to how many teeth are on the wheel and how quickly it's spinning. But there are other objects around the home that can demonstrate the same principle. For example, I have this small fan here. Now, if I turn this on and hold a piece of cardstock to it, we should see the same type of results. Now this drill press makes some interesting sounds. I can get several different tones by adjusting the speed of this spindle. Just like on Savart's wheel, this chuck has several evenly spaced teeth on it. And if I turn it on low... Let's try a higher speed.
Now, the behavior of Savard Twill reminds me of a popular activity we had when I was growing up. And it involved baseball cards, a bicycle, and some clothespins or some type of clamp. The idea was to clamp the cards in between the spokes so that they'd make noise as the wheel turned. Hopefully, if I get going fast enough, it'll sound like a musical note. Now, the object with the teeth doesn't necessarily have to be a wheel. For example, this is a bandsaw blade. It has teeth that are evenly spaced and it runs as a continuous loop inside the motor housing. Now, up until this point, I've held a stationary card against moving teeth or ridges, but we can also go in the opposite direction. For example, this vacuum hose has ridges in it, and I can hold it stationary and move the card across the top of it. Now, here's a toy that operates on that same principle. It's called a talking tape, and it has ridges on the surface of it. However, in this case, the ridges aren't symmetrical. But one end of the tape is attached inside this cup to act as an amplifier, and when I rub my thumb across it, it should sound like somebody talking. Now they've even done the same idea on roads where they've carved rumble strips into the pavement to play a musical tone when a car drives over it. I think I'd like to try that road myself sometime. Now I will list that video and additional videos of roads that sing down in the description below. In the meantime, I hope this Savart's wheel didn't hurt your ears too much. I will be working on making improvements on it and hopefully show it to you at a later time. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.